The Stacked Bars Placemat is a quick and easy project made with two and a half inch strips. So that makes it perfect for using up scraps. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make the Stacked Bars Placemat. Welcome to Eva to Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So this placemat is called Stacked Bars because it has these two and a half inch strips. Now, if you look carefully, you can see this is made with reversible patchwork. So there's only one layer of fabric, so it's not quilted. So that saves a lot of time in the finishing. Now this sample that I have and the sample I'm gonna be making for you today are made with batik fabric and that's a perfect choice because it is also reversible. And so then there's no right and wrong side when you're finished. But there are other fabric options. You can make this with pretty much whatever fabric you want. So here's a sample that's made with just solids. So you can see that looks great too. And these are solids, they're from cherry wood fabrics and they feel really nice. So that is a fun option, but you can also just use any scraps of quilting uh, fabric that you have at home. And here's another one. This is just made with two fabrics, um, two uh, floral fabrics. So you can see this one is a fun option too. Now, if you are using fabrics that do have a clear right and wrong side, then there's just one other thing you have to pay attention to, but it's not difficult and it still makes a great project. So let's get started making the stacked bars placement. To make this, you are gonna need two and a half inch strips of fabric. So you can cut fabric or you can use pieces from a jelly roll, leftover scraps, whatever you have on hand. This is a great project for that. But you are gonna need six pieces that are two and a half by 10 inches. And then you'll need four pieces that are two and a half by 12 inches. So once you get those cut, then, um, you can either just join them randomly or you can lay them out to see what kind of layout you might go. So I'm not gonna overthink this too much, but these are two of the same, so I'll just separate those. Um, so I'm gonna go with that layout looks good to me. And you'll notice that when you lay out the six pieces that are gonna to go together in a strip set, it looks a lot wider than 12 inches. And you might be worried that you have too many pieces, uh, but don't worry about that because the seams that we're using do take up a lot of uh, fabric. So this is not a regular quarter inch seam allowance. And so um, all your regular quilting rules don't apply, but you can see that the 12 inch strips go in pairs at the sides and then the 10 inch strips go together in a strip set. So I'm just gonna begin joining these pieces together and these are gonna be joined using a reversible patchwork seam, the simple Pujagi seam. And so it's not a regular quarter inch seam. You will stitch them with having the edges offset, then fold the edge over, press, open it up and press and then top stitch the seam allowance down. So if you've never done that technique before, you can check out the link. It has a detailed tutorial for how to stitch that seam, but you're gonna stitch the 12 inch ones into pairs and that goes at the edge and the 10 inch ones are gonna go into a strip set that is in the middle. So I'm just going to get started sewing these pieces together. Now all my strips are sewn together. And if you're wondering about thread color, that is kind of a personal choice. Um, if you have really busy fabrics, you can pick a color that kind of blends. But if you have solids, like on this one, uh, no matter what color thread you choose, it is gonna show up on at least some of the fabrics. And because of this style of seam, your stitching will be visible. And so you can think about if you wanna have a contrasting color fabric to stand out, or you wanna try and blend it, it is personal choice. 
um, but don't stress too much about thread color. If you're really not sure, try a couple little sample pieces and see how it looks, but in the end, it is a personal choice. Um, keep in mind for placements, these are probably going to be things that are used a lot and they'll receive a lot of washing. And so don't stress out too much about having it look perfect because these are utility pieces. The other thing you'll notice when you're stitching on the seam is that one side of the seam has two rows of stitching that are visible and the other side of the seam has only one row of stitching that is visible. Now, I tend to just ignore that, put my pieces together and see however they come out is fine. Uh, but some people that really bothers them, especially if you have your stitching more visible. And so if you want them to be all the same, just make sure that you always put your fabric either wrong sides together or right sides together. And as long as you do that, pick one and stick with it, then your seams will all end up with the same um, two rows of stitching on the same side. Uh, if you are stitching with fabric that does have a clear right and wrong side, then the same thing. Pick away either right sides together or wrong sides together and stitch them all the same way. And then your fabric will end up all on the same side. So once you've done your stitching, then this middle piece, you might need to just trim the sides to make that a straight line. And then we're just gonna sew um, the edge pieces on in the same way. Now, when you're aligning them, it's gonna be easier to have the 12 inch piece be the offset piece because then when you're pressing, you're not pressing any seams. Um, you're pressing over the flat piece of fabric. If you're really struggling with the pressing with this piece that has seams on it, I do have another tutorial for a different method of how to do this seam. It is, um, I don't use that method very often, but if you're struggling with pressing, it's very helpful because it makes the pressing super easy. So once you've trimmed the sides, then you're gonna add um, these strips onto the sides and you can see that we're almost done. Now that the sides have been joined, we're just going to give it another trim because you can see that the 12 inch pieces might not line up exactly with the size. But the center piece that when we laid it out looked like it was going to be way longer than 12 inches is actually pretty close to 12 inches. But we'll just trim this down to make it into a nice rectangle shape. And then once it's trimmed, we'll just finish the edges with a simple hem. So we'll just fold over a quarter of an inch, press that, then fold over another quarter of an inch, press that, and then top stitch the hem. So just do one side at a time. And when you've done all four sides, then you're finished. So this makes a great placemat project and you could make a whole set of placemats that are exactly identical or they're just coordinating. And it's super easy to adapt this pattern to make a coordinating table runner. All you would do is add more sections to get the length that you need. So have fun with this project. Be creative with different fabric combinations. And be sure to tag EBITDA Studio if you share a picture on social media because I'd love to see what you make. For more tutorials, patterns, and inspiration, be sure to check out my website, ebitastudio.com.